Hi right guys, it's Ben again from Nerf Mods for Beginners and today we're going to look at brass breaching your retaliator. How to turn your basic retaliator, which is 6 kilo, into this. With a good air seal. Alright, so first off, we'll put the brass breech one away. And then we'll get to this one. This is just your stock out of the box retaliator even though I think the previous owner did do a six kilo drop drop in spring the retaliator is very popular amongst a lot of players and with a good brass breech at a high range 8 10 kilo spring you'll be clearing 150 FPS with elites which is pretty good I'm personally a long shot fan, but a lot of people like the Retaliator for size. Now with this, it is a very long process, so I'm going to work through a process and skip forward to the next one. I've already pre-made a few breaches in different stages of going off, and I'll walk, work through all the finer points with this. My first ever video was a drop-in spring mod kit uh, guide for a retaliator. Uh, a little bit of nostalgia there. After this one, I will be doing a long shot brass breech video in the future as well. Because a lot of people are showing interest in it. In what they can do, and the fact that it is relatively inexpensive to do. And all you need is a bit of practice. You're not going to get it right the first time every time. Okay, so opening up the blaster, stock standard retaliator. Still got these grubby locks in it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ta ta. All I'm going to do is remove the breech section out of this and put it away for now. That's all I need out of this for now. So I'll put everything back in here for reassembly later. And these things go in the bin. Not unless you want clip and sled locks. I personally don't. So, bear with me one second, sorry. The workshop's in a bit of a mess. So what I'm going to be putting in with this breech is... Some 916 for the breech itself, which will be drilled out and goes in like that, and some 1732nd for the barrel. And what I do with mine is I make the barrel short and sleeve it with 9 um, 916 again. It gives you, I find, better performance, more FPS gain, and still gives you the straightness of having a proper barrel in there. But because of the darts, they flow pretty well in that. When you get down to the 1732nd, even though this is flared a bit, it is a lot tighter fit. As you can see, there's a lot of friction when you're pushing through that. So I only want that to travel through a dart's length. And the rest goes into the add-on barrel, which is a 19, 916. Nice and easy. Uh, my brass I'm using is K&S brass, which I purchased through Blaster Tech. I'll put a link in the video description. And the spring I'm putting in is a 6 kilo Nerf Turf spring. Which I use those springs for everything I do because they are fantastic. Let's move that to slide for now. First off, we've got to take out the pin to remove it from the um, sled. I've just got an Allen key I use for it. And a pair of pliers won't help to do the rest. So it's done. Unlike the long shot, you don't need to reinforce a sled on a retaliator when you're only doing up to 10 kilos. Probably 10's a bit higher, say 7 or 8 kilos. will be the limit without reinforcing. And it's your plunger tube, and we've got to make sure that that 
is nice and tight. It is. It's letting a bit of air out the back. The thing I've found with these, you've got to be careful that this seam along here doesn't split. Because that splits and lets air out. So it's normally a good thing just to reinforce it with a bit of tape. But that's... You can get a bit of Teflon tape in that to improve it, but after a bit of movement it gets better. Yeah. So I might just leave that as it is. Okay, for the breech section, which is a stock standard one, AR is still intact. So first thing I'm going to do is drill out that AR. Rather than going through drilling it all in one go, because then it gets a little bit messy. And a straighter breech, a cleaner breech, is a better performing breech. So this is my drill bit I use for drilling out ARs. You can tell by the AR spring that's on it. It is just a bit smaller than the hole that's in the back there. So I'm not going to break that lip. Because if I break that lip and that O-ring comes off, it's useless. So just drilling that out. I'm taking my time with it because I don't want to accidentally drill through the side. Because I'll put a hole in it and it's going to be very messy and a lot of cleaning up to do. I can still salvage it because there'll be brass inside of it. But it'll still be messy. And I prefer a nice clean breach. There we go. Got the rubbish out of that. And you can see the AR has now been drilled out. Now with this next part where I go through, I'll be drilling out for the brass. But before I do that, I always mark where the breech lines up for reassemble. Because it will split open when I drill to about there. Because where the AR sits, there is still a little bit of residue in there. A little bit of extra plastic. And when that's removed, the thing just falls apart. But the brass will fix that up. And I'll just hit it a couple more times, just clean out the crap. Now, one thing before I go into the drilling out of the rest of the breach. I'm very experienced with power tools. I'm a carpenter by trade, so I've had lots of experience with drills and things like that. But this is not something that a 10, 12, 14 year old can do at home without supervision. So please, if you are a younger viewer, please don't try this without an adult helping. There goes out my drill bit, and here's my 916 drill bit that I use for all my breaches. Now for my drill settings on this, I'm in second speed, which is high speed, and I'm drilling in reverse. If I drill in forward, this will grab and snap. So I drill it in in reverse. Now, if you're not interested in watching this part, this normally takes me about 10 minutes to do, and I'll be doing it live for a camera. So it's going to be a little while. I will talk through some things on the way through. First of all, the first part I always drill in forward, just to even out this bit where the lip is. That's the most important part of when you're breaching, because that's what connects to your barrel. So I'm going to start now. I'll give you a little example of what happens when I put it in forward. That's what happens. This is why I always keep it in reverse for drilling out a breach. This is the longest part of drilling the breech because you need to get this enough material out of this so then the 916 will go and sit in there. You can't just drill straight in otherwise it will be on, a, on an angle like that and it's not going to bond properly. You need to wear this part down here first with a sharp drill bit then the rest will go in straight because you only have a little bit over a millimetre or two millimetres space when you're drilling. Now 
And also because it's in reverse, it's not going to hurt me if I catch my hand. Another safety reason for reverse. See, I'm wearing away at the plastic there, which I still need a little bit more, and it's starting to make its way through into the breech itself. I do this slowly because it does get hot. When it gets hot, it warps and it will melt if you rush it. See, we've got a good start in it. We're probably about two centimeters in. So it's up to there now. So when it gets to about there is when the actual join will snap. I keep stopping and starting to make sure I'm going through evenly to make sure I'm not wearing close on one side and, and not on the other which at the moment this is running a little bit close to the ins to the bottom here so I'll readjust my drilling for that close to the join now where it's going to break and when you're drilling this too you stop about there before it tapers down get nice and close if you can but don't drill through it because if you snap that off you're going to lose your seal and your breach will be useless something we're a little bit on the low side here and there's not much on the high so I've got to readjust the way I'm drilling it to compensate for that now. Now a lot of people do will cut it he, here already. What I do is when I'm drilling through I want the drill bit to be into that second section so I keep that line straight. And it's already starting to bend now. Alright, that's ready to snap. That's why that line's there, so when we reattach it later, yeah, that's hollowed out and that's on its way. Get this crap out of here. Back and forward. Oh. Okay. 
get that out so it makes drilling a bit easier. Drill it out. 916 back in. When it's tight, back in reverse. And finish off the rest. Make sure I'm doing it all in camera for you. Again, don't try this at home unless you're experienced. See, I'm about a millimeter out that way, so now I've got to correct that if I want it to be nice and straight and even. That's getting hot and starting to buckle there. low on that side, they'd take more out of that side to make it even. So this is a slow boring part of doing this. Sure, everything's lined up. I'm not near the end there. I can feel the drill bit under my hand. I'm sitting there at the moment. I'm still about halfway to go. And it's starting to wear a bit close on that side. Because it's in reverse, that didn't hurt. Clear out some of this gunk again. Because that's actually melted now, because of the heat of the drill bit. So you can still see I'm only about half to a millimeter out on one side, so that's pretty good. Getting close now. Just getting all the melted plastic out, make the drilling process a lot easier.
And with all that muck removed, it's drilling in nice and quick now. Now I'm sitting about there, so that's about where I want to be. Just before that narrows down. A little bit of fraying around the edges here, but that's pretty good drill. So probably only about a millimetre out of centre on that. Now we're going to go back through this one, through the back way and sort it out. Here I can get some more off that front bit there, so it's got a good bond to the um, front of the breech. Even if that slips, it's in reverse. Okay. Now I've got to make a bit of room in it because that drill bit is really tight. See how the 916 slides in now? Still a bit tighter in that front bit. Yeah, need some more cleaning out. You don't want it wobbling around, but you want it to push in and pull out easily because you're gonna have a layer of epoxy over that to fill that little gap. stuck in the middle there. Pretty good. And that front lip will bite down nice and tight onto the brass. So now we just need to try the back part for fit. And this normally fits pretty easily. Saying so that, this one isn't. It needs a bit more cleaning out. Don't push too hard on that because if you push it through to the tapered end, it's going to be wrecked. Try that now. Nice. Needs to go a little bit deeper. The front part is, fits well. A little bit of heat stretching like that, it's not going to cause an issue. Happens on most of them. Not all of them are perfect. And that's sitting inside that lip there where it starts to taper down, so that's right now. So let me just clear down this area before we start with epoxy. Thing I'll do with these is give them a bit of a sand just to make sure that end is a little bit flat when they come back together because if there's a little bit of gunk running in here and it pushes the breech out it's going to throw out your air seal 
So just clean them up so they're nice and straight and they'll fit well in together. Remove any little bits hanging like that. And see how it fits back together using the marks that we made when we started. <laughs> there. Alright, so I'll clean off a little bit more off that. Find where my knife is. Right. Cutting away from myself. Just a little bit of residue from where the AR assembly was inside. Faded out, so right there. Right there. So that's where my join is between the two. Okay, so now I'm going to epoxy it up. How I use, do my epoxy is a bowl, dead dart, one that's missing its head. Because paintbrushes get expensive if you're going to do this a lot. If you have a paintbrush and you want to do it, go ahead. This is the way I do it. And that one's finished. Another one ready. This is a two-part four-day epoxy that that the arm company says it's got 140 kilos of holding force. So I think that'll be more than enough. Now, dead dart, dead dart, dead dart is there. Mix some of that up. So it's a nice, even consistency. So there's no more light and dark, it's all the one colour now. Alright, where is, that's what I'm looking for. Run some on the inside. And the dart's a pretty good size fit too. I'll be running a little bit more on the brass itself. Now, I'm not doing it all the way up the brass because a natural fit will push a lot of it back up. Ah, that's in place. There's plenty of epoxy sitting around the top there, so I don't need to put any more on. Um, front part of the breech. My marker is worn off, but it's there. And do the same again on the brass to start with. So I found this a really good use for your darts that are busted that you normally just throw away. Give them a little bit more use. Inside of the brass, inside of the breech, I should say, not brass. Something gets sticky now. Alright, so pushing this in now. Looking for our mark, which is there and there. Pushing it in place. Now, that's where my mark is, but I'm turning it to the side for a second. Just to make sure that front part's got extra bond on it. Put a little bit more there. And then, because it's starting to set, I need some pliers. I'm turning that guide bit over to where I've just put the more epoxy on and my back I'm 
line is there and pushing it back so they're in nice and tight now there you go that's where my mark was that I first marked the breech like I said is about half to a millimeter out of perfect alignment which is not that bad pretty good actually to clean off some of the excess and now a lot of people use zip ties to do this but I just use clothes pegs does the same job making sure that guide piece at the front here has got enough clamping on it as well because that starts to come up the whole thing starts to come up As you can hear, the snapping in, so it's a nice tight seal. The pegs are holding it down, right size. Okay, get rid of that. Now, like I said, this is a four day epoxy, and today is the ninth. So I've prepared, and that will go over there. So I know myself when that's ready to come out. Alright, so it's been moved to the side for now. Clean up some glue off my hands. And get rid of that. Okay, so when it's been glued, when it's come out, I said I've been busy, got a few extras. That's what happens when you get too close to one side, but it's not going to affect it because it's still the right spacing and the brass makes it airtight. So it will come out looking pretty much like that. Now, get the Dremel out. I don't want to do it on camera because it's very loud. Cut down there, cut across there, cut there, cut, 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 cut. When that's done, it will just about pull off. Make a wire out of me. Just needs a little couple more snips, which I can do later. So this one is only left like this for the video. There you go. Did snap out. Now what I do with that now after it's been cut is I'll use my Dremel sanding bit and I'll sand up, bring it flat into the to the line of the actual plastic itself, give it a good sanding, get rid of that millimeter or so I left, get into the corners, and then after that I will get a flat screwdriver and I burr the insides, deburr the insides and get rid of all the little bits of brass there that can catch on a dart. So that one will be cleaned up later. I've got two here that are done. This one's an example of when you don't go in 100% straight. It's not really going to affect it, but it just doesn't look as good as one that's straight. All right, so with this now, I've been in, you can see the marks there where I've sanded away the inside and deburred it all, so there's no sharp edges, and a dart will slide in and out without catching. Nice. And so I'll put that in the sled now. That one's ready to go. You can see where I always mark my brass. Oh, the other thing that I didn't say is, because when you're drilling it out, it does make it a little bit thicker. So I use the sanding bit too, and I sand it off a little bit there, there, around where it makes contact when it seals. Otherwise it feels a bit swollen. It's hard to get in and out. So just sanding off a millimetre or two around there it makes it nice and easy to go in. Alright, put that pin back in. It's back in place. Now, for my next bit, my next shameless plug will be to Spence Works, which will show something that I'll buy off of him. But first, before I get into that, I've got to take this part apart. Take the muzzle apart, remove the dart stopper, because the brass will do it itself and it'll just get in the way. a dart stopper. That's crap now, that's rubbish. Get that 
screw because they're always helpful later. And you've got to remove this dart, little dart peg there. So a flat screwdriver is what I use, and I wedge out that little pin. With the return spring on it. Bye. I'm just going to lift that out, there it goes the return spring, there goes the little dart gate. Gone, see you later. Now, the next bits I need, I had here somewhere, which I'm missing. The next bit I need is something to house a barrel. which I buy these from Spenceworks, which I'll put a link to his Facebook as well. This piece that he makes, which I find it's, instead of me building something and epoxying it in place, which can take me 45 minutes, half an hour, it slips straight into the muzzle. That bit there is removed, so when that slides in, it makes no contact. And it basically, you push it in. Make sure it's centered up so then the gap's at the top. It should be about there. And that's in place now, ready to accept the barrel. And it fits nicely inside so it doesn't affect, uh, affect you attaching any muzzle points to it. And now we need to put the 1732nd in. That's where it's going to sit. I've pre-cut mine so it fits in line with the muzzle and the end. I'll take it out and show you. So now with this, leave about three millimeters across there. And mark out here roughly in line with your three millimeter mark there each side of the inside of the dart housing so what that is this is where we're going to cut so we're going to cut out the rest some people put curves on it but that's up to them I just do it nice and easy put that out and the dart will sit on top of there when it goes into the magazine, which I'll show you. Push that back in. Lined up, so when all that's cut out, that will sit in there. Nice little quick dry assembly, just to show you how it works. And the magazine is here. And a dart. Oh, it's broken, but still got a head on it. You got to make sure when you put that in that the line, which is hard to see from your angle, but that black line, the dart sits inside of that, so it's not going to hit the breech, and it fits in over the back when it's when the bolt's fully open. Now I said three millimeter because that's roughly what I do because I've done it that many times now. I can. Just draw a line, I'll know exactly where I've got to go. But that dart will fit in there now, and there'll be a, and this will close over and seal. If it's together, it'll be a lot easier, but I'll show you. And because of that 3D printed parts in there, it pulls in, and it's over the brass there. So that's already got your seal and that will push a little bit further and cover that hole that line I made so that is fully sealed brass breech now so what I'm going to do next with this and this will pull the barrel out with it whenever I do it 
to save time for this video, I've done, already done a lot of the steps, but I'm just walking through them. Okay, so what you've got to do is now, you need to cut around those lines, then you need to glue in, super glue in this purple piece, which I glue it in from the back with the bolt out. So I just run a bit of super glue around the inside of it. Then you need to cut this, line it up, put it back in, and then glue this in place. I've already got one done, so we can skip forward. Just no way to save some time. This one's in. It's been cut to my lines. Got a three, three millimeter spot there. I've sleeved the outside with a 916, like I said in the start, which sits about there. So this one's a little bit longer, which is basically my leftovers from making up a couple of breaches. So that's all cut. Now it's time to reassemble and see if it actually all works properly. Hopefully. So we've got a plunger tube, sled and breach. Oh, before I put it back in, I always take the sled lock out, and I haven't done it yet. Because it's going to be a pain in the butt and get stuck. There, nice and even. That's a nice seal, yep. The plunger was pretty good. That's been super glued in place now, so it's not going anywhere. Just testing how the breach goes in. Feels a little bit tight, but it's closing. And that's closed over, so I know that's sealed. Alright, get this in place. It's the same, it's a six kilo nerf turf spring. Trigger catch on six kilo, the blue retaliators are pretty good and you don't need to upgrade them. Any higher and you will, seven or eight kilo, don't need to be upgraded. Now, another thing I do is, when I put the retaliator back together, you'll notice there's a lot of trigger pull area here between releasing the catch and being pulled back right for now. so what I do with that is go back to my bag of tricks again where's the trigger? where's the trigger? where's the trigger? not that one uh, trigger, 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 trigger which yet again I'm pinching off some clothes peg, which is a wedge piece cut, the same length as that plate. And that one's a little bit crooked, so that's going to catch. I'll catch on the sled if I don't trim that. So this goes in now, and you release, you're pretty much straight on the catch now. And your release time is a lot more responsive rather than squeezing all the way back. But, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, that's just super glued on and in place. I'll put it back to the standard one, just to show. But I personally do this on my own retaliators, I find it a lot easier. But for the video, I'll just put the stock one back in. Okay, dart holder, which is pretty pointless on a Magpad blaster. Catch it in place, muzzle screw back down, those two screws, the sled's locked in place on the slide. I'll put the um, accessory part in later, I'm not worried about that for now, but I'll probably have to take the part again anyway. This is where you start your fine tuning, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of touching up. 
Also add some screws. I don't need to do all the screws up because like I said I probably have to take it apart a few times just to get it 100% to where I want it. So I'll do about half the screws. See how it goes. And now straight off, I've got a little bit of a problem with the lip hitting. I want to say it's a little bit of adjustment, just a little bit of pressure. Just get the alignment right. Not 100% still, but the seal's pretty good. Now, not every time you'll get a 100% air seal like I did on that first one. I find it a lot easier to get a proper air seal on a long shot compared to a retaliator. That hits pretty hard. I don't have a chronographer here to test it. But the breech is overlapped, so there should be no air leaking in that. Sometimes, just with the O-rings, you can lose a bit of air. It hasn't got a perfect seal, but it's not bad. And it's still hitting pretty hard, as you can tell by the sound. Okay, well, I hope there was enough information in this video for you to tackle on your own brass breech job of your own. I'll do a little bit of fiddling around with this after, just making sure everything lines up. Yeah, breech is sealed. It has about two to three millimeters of overlap on it. The 916 barrel on the front. So yeah, that's how I make my brass breech retaliators. Some other people do it different ways, but I do it this way. Like I said, the brass came from uh, it's KNS branded brass, which comes where well, I buy from Blaster Tech here in Australia, which I'll put a link to his website in the description. 3D printed barrel part, that's not the right one, but the purple thing you're seeing, was from Spence Works. I don't know the other one here that I was working on. That little purple bit, which does help with your barrel alignment. That's from Spence Works. And my springs, as always, come from Nerf uh, Turf Springs. Sorry, to change his name. Turf Springs, the six kilo retaliator spring. So after drilling it out, leave it sit for four days. Follow the lines, cut out, sand up, and get. I use a screwdriver to get all the birds out so your darts don't catch on the way through. And it does need a little bit of adjustment after it's built. Not 100%, but I'm happy with that. It's a good, good blaster. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. The long shot brass breach will be coming up next.